So if you were paying attention to the election results in the UK, you know that the Labor Party got thumped harder than a Bible in Kentucky by a family trying to visit the Creationist Museum, <laughs> but stuck in traffic behind the free condoms float at the back of the gay pride parade. The Labor Party did not fare well, and right-winger David Cameron will remain Lord Duke of Boysenberry, or whatever they call their leader. I, I don't know. Of course, compared to the standard American right-wing presidential candidates, Cameron looks like a free-love, dreadlocked hippie child. And if you're an average American, when you heard about the election results, you thought, I can't believe this. This is outlandish. This is outrageous. You're telling me that there was an election in the UK? <laughs> I mean, I remember there was something about voting, but I, I thought it had to do with whether Benedict Cumberbatch was hot or not. I voted not because he looks too much like a praying mantis in my book. And, and I have a very accurate book. The US paid as much attention to the UK elections as we do to our carbon footprint. We're like, what? Carbon Jesus is going to carry me, so there will only be one set of footprints. <laughs> Part of our failure to hear about international news is because our media doesn't give a sh They're too busy reporting that Jeb Bush said he would have invaded Iraq just like his brother did. Really, Jeb? Really? You would have also committed one of the largest foreign policy catastrophes ever, bursting full of lies and war crimes like a geopolitical pinata of death? <laughs> Come on! When someone has a mentally challenged brother or sister, they love them and take care of them, but they don't proudly go around pooping their own pants in order to show support. <laughs> You also didn't hear about the UK election much because the run-up to it only lasted five weeks, as compared to the US, where our campaign season is about two years, or however long it takes you to get a power drill and drill into your forehead, thereby relieving the pressure and letting the campaign stupidity that has amassed there ooze down your face. And just before you lose consciousness, you think, God bless America. <laughs> Also in the UK, political ads are banned on TV and radio. Banned! Here in the US, they are played on loop until Hillary Clinton or Jeb Bush or whoever is factoring prominently in your nightmares slash sexual fantasies. <laughs> oh yeah, Jeb Lurie. Oh yeah. Do to me what you're gonna do to the country. Ah, I like it rough. My safety word is campaign finance reform. <laughs> So this is why... So this is why the candidate who spends the most money almost always wins. Over 80% in the Senate and over 90% in the House. Our democracy quite literally goes to the highest bidder. Plus, the mainstream media has no interest in reforming the system because they make a dump load of money from campaign ads. Why would they talk about getting money out when that money goes in to their bank accounts? The UK has strict campaign finance laws, meaning corporations such as Coke industries cannot buy candidates for office like they did with Wisconsin, with Wisconsin governor and part-time sniffling rodent-faced anal leech Scott Walker. <laughs> that is an objective description, all right? It's on his resume. This is not to say there aren't corrupt and or douchey British lawmakers, all right? If I said that, Margaret, Margaret Thatcher's corpse would start banging against the 12-inch thick cast-iron metal casket they welded her into and then encased in cement and then put inside a prison ship and then sank that to the bottom of the ocean. You can't be too safe when it comes to zombie Thatcher. Okay. But the UK doesn't spend insane amounts of money on its elections. In the 2010 general election in Britain, the party spent 31 million pounds, which is less than Sheldon Adelson, a single saggy man, spent on Newt Gingrich's campaign, a single saggy candidate who didn't even win the primary. The Koch brothers alone have pledged to spend nearly a billion dollars on purchasing control of the U.S. presidency. The end result is candidates who are completely and fully indebted to the ultra-rich psychopaths exploiting this system. And if there's a candidate who's not bought off, then you basically won't hear about them on our corporate media. So I'm sorry, America, but the U.K. has a better system for their elections. I mean, they have their own ways to make sure 
rich white guys remain in control, but at least there aren't so many commercials. <laughs>